Hey guys, Vorlesc here, how you going? We are going to take a look at a game of Infinity between the Akari Company sectorial of NA2, the Mercenaries, and your classic boys, the Nomads. I know I've been playing against Vanilla Nomads quite a bit recently. This will be a different opponent than usual. I usually play against my bud Matt, who plays a lot of Nomads. This will be against Jed, aka what is tactics on the forums. Haven't played Jed in a while, but uh, he used to win a lot of our little local tournaments. Um, every time Jed comes to play against me, he usually starts the game by saying, oh, I'm really rusty, I haven't played in months, and like he says that every single game, but we've stopped believing him by now, because, you know, he, he plays a, a decent game. So, Ikari Company versus Nomads, we will be playing on the mission Acquisition. I find that with the ITS season at the moment being so terrible, like, worse than it's been in ages, um, Acquisition has just become one of my go-to missions, because... Even though it's a very easy mission to win second turn if you've defended well enough, you still have the entire game to go batter them, and there is the 16-inch deployments, uh, and it can be uh, doable to put your guys out in the midfield and stop your opponent from moving in and taking the objectives. So it's a very playable mission, and just given how bad some of the other missions are, I'm okay with it. But we're going to go talk through some of the lists, uh, well, the two lists that we'll be using for this one, and uh, yeah, just generally get on with it. So um, my list for today will be a bit of a look at what happens when you take the Wooming Harris, which I don't normally do. Normally my go-to Harris is the two Tankos plus Brawler Multi Sniper. But um, I, I find the um, linkable HMG to be very important for many factions, given that there are so many situations where you need a nice, solid, beefy thing to clear their sniper out or whatever they've got in their link team and also he makes a pretty serviceable uh, table watcher an aro piece with his armor four he's got cover two shots that kind of thing you can doctor him back so well worth it and then he comes with this nice cheap little guy who has a chain rifle submachine gun so you've got the short range covered then of course the brawler who would be usually an overpriced sort of piece uh, is really well worth it in a faction that has good access to smoke and not much else in the way of MSV2. Well, I mean, there is the Rushi, but it's either going to be the Brawler or the Rushi, and Rushi is a bit of a different ball game. But what I want to draw your attention to is that I'm still going to take the two free-range Tankos anyway. So you've still got these other two little guys. Um, technically, if I had an extra point five SWCs, I could uh, add the Tanko who is harassable, and you could deploy everybody in the deployment zone and then choose after, well, towards the end of deployment, whether you have the Brawler plus Tankos or the Brawler plus Wu Ming. So quite a little tri neat trick there, but we're not going to do this list. I'm pretty much committed to the Wu Ming Harris because that's the only Harris model, and they will usually be featuring the Brawler with Multi-Sniper. Please note, though, the other thing you can do with this nice flexible setup is to swap the Brawler Lieutenant out, have him follow along with the Wu Ming team, and have the Multi-Sniper in the link team if you really want to go balls to the wall plus three blisters skill, to your fully linked brawler, which is very doable. So I quite like that as well. Otherwise, this is my stock standard defensive link team. You've got the beautiful Tanko missile launcher, cheapest chips for an amazing aero, plus the really super cheap auto battery of guys over here usually does the job. And the, the thought is that if you're going first, you have to push in, you have to shoot things from long range. Either the team here can do it with the missile launcher if you really wanted to, but it's usually just going to be the wooming HMG following that up or you have the Desperado plant some smoke or even the Yuan Yuan from your side of the table and then hit it with the Brawler Multi Sniper. So you've got an answer for their flash pole spots, but more especially their posthuman Multi Sniper, that kind of thing. So it's the go-to. You might be wondering though about these two unlinkable Tanko over here. Well, their job, believe it or not, is to basically do the same job as your Warbands normally would. They defend your deployment zone. They move up uh, into the midfield. They become a nuisance. They've got the regular style impetuous and that means that uh, you can restrain them without having to spend resources which i love as they move out impetuously though if you just caught out caught off guard by a random skirmisher on the other side or a flash pulse spot you can fire your blitzen or your flammer spear at them um, and they become super annoying at only 23 points um, even worse if they do get out into the midfield and they're just hanging out behind a couple rocks you know somewhere just chilling then your opponent to deal with them has to beat a guy that can dodge in Fizz 13, has got Kinematica, beats you up in close combat, armor 3, 2 wounds. They become extremely no annoying and uh, well worth their points if you're playing them correctly and constantly choosing the right AROs. And God forbid your opponent leaves something end of turn next to them that they can just move over and attack. It's just a bit crazy. 
not only that, not only are they providing that value uh, for your game plan generally, just that disruption, but if your tanko missile launcher goes down, as you'd expect it to, being the main thing to defend, you know, just standing out in the middle of nowhere, watching the enemy's deployment zone, they're going to kill it eventually. Well, you can actually reform this link team with one of the smaller tankos. Imagine adding that contender back in the team, or the flammer spear if you've still got the ammunition. Even the blitz and light shotgun, if he's the point man of the team, in that last turn push towards their table edge, he's still getting all of the buffs. So I was quite keen to try this kind of setup. In group two, you've got the normal sort of stuff. Uh, Tokusetsu Doctor, you really need the Yao Zhao rather than the Warcore because she's trying to cover both the HMG and the missile launcher. Fugazi, classic, ninja, typical. Luberto, too good not to take, too powerful. Uh, Desperado, couldn't afford you Jimbo, otherwise I do like the Crazy Koalas. Desperado is the cheaper version, still very useful for the impetuous smoke. And the single Yuan Yuan, sometimes you'll attack with them, but often you'll just bring them uh, next to where, where you need the smoke to be landed. Uh, that's, that's as simple as it gets sometimes. So a little bit of a different take on Ikari, one of my favorite factions that I'm keen to uh, show for you guys. My opponent, not normally a Nomads player, is going to be trying out his uh, thought process on how to, uh, you know, try and win with the nom Nomads here. This is not the list he played. It is a uh, casual reconstruction in my mind as to what he roughly had. Um, I've added a third Securitate here, even though I don't think he actually had a third one. There was just a 13-point gap, and I wasn't sure whether that was spent on some additional uh, Jaguar somewhere or an upgrade for something that I've missed. So this is just very roughly speaking what he had. So let's have a talk about the basics. It's not a, it's not a terrible list because it checks a lot of the boxes I would normally want Nomads to check off. You've got a lot of cheap cheerleaders. Securitate Lieutenant, great. Puppet Master for the hacking and for counterintelligence, that's great. The Jammers in there, fantastic. The Jaguars, can't go wrong with them. Plenty of Morlocks, love the Morlocks. Um, Zeros, yep, can't go wrong with them either. What is a little bit questionable is that he's doubled down on the Holomen on each group. And I find that has potential because it means you spend all of your orders on the first Holomen, all the orders in the second Hollow Man, and you can potentially get a lot done just clobbering them with that, that super jump maneuverability and the Spitfire and his great all-round stats. The problem arises when you start to think of situations where your opponent actually does have Phoenix with this heavy rocket launcher and the Steel Phalanx Link Team with Sixth Sense and ODD. Or they've got a Noctifer, or they have an Avatar, or they've got a Cutter, or they've got a Swiss Guard Missile Launcher, or a Hacktail Missile Launcher, or they've got a Kamau and a Link Team. All of these units, which can just pummel you from long range with a really devastating weapon, and have good stats, and have um, negative mods, well, you're really feeling the lack of an Intruder or a Kreeza Borak. So, yep, yeah, two Holo Men, kind of cool to use all of the orders, but the problem is that... One Holoman is going to find the best job for a Holoman to accomplish, and he'll do that. Then he'll look for the next best task, and the next best task. And the next Holoman will be walking around the battlefield and, and not finding many really good targets, because the first one's, you know, got the job done. But as soon as you run into one of the units I just mentioned, well, what are you going to attack with it? So then you come to the reaction zond. I like this. The Puppet Master puts Assisted Fire Level 2 onto it, and he's shooting at that target in the distance. Problem is that your only engineer is usually going to be off the table, uh, and the the value of the reaction bond uh, zond is to hit the target and mitigate that risk of being crit or going unconscious with your remote uh, presence ability going to uh, unconscious level two. You revive the bot and keep attacking. So even if that's your answer for the camel on the link team, um, you might not do too well if you don't get it in your first go and he just shoots you and you don't have something nearby to repair it. So I'd really be worried for this list on that basis. The Holomen, just such a steal at 36 points. It's hard to it's hard to resist taking them, but what I'd prefer to see is just ripping one of them out of there, use your additional 13 points we saved from the Securitate, and then throwing in your Intruder HMG, or Intruder Sniper, or um, Kariza Borak with HMG would be my uh, suggestion. There's also a few other little things we haven't quite really seen here. I mean, there's the new Jazz and Billy, which are just busted, which you're missing out on. Um, it doesn't have a Liberto. Uh, just little things like that where you can sort of optimize it. And it's kind of getting a bit sad because with the changes Corvus Belly are making, um, Nomad lists are starting to look a bit uh, similar to each other. 
uh, whereas this faction really should just be such an awesome diverse faction with lots and lots of really viable lists. Okay, time to talk about the actual battle report. Let's minimize my face and we'll chat. So this is the table. Looking through from one side here, grabbing out a pink pen. Your goal is to, you know, with the big 16-inch deployments, you are meant to end the game with your data tracker in base contact with the middle objective. If you have any model whatsoever as the only model in base contact with this thing, you get three points. Then you get another two for it being the data tracker. Then you get one point for each of these consoles. The other ones are pictured underneath the bridge. Then another one point for the model being a specialist that captures that. So you've got one, two, five, seven, eight, nine, and then there's a classified card on the side. So that's potentially 10. So uh, without further ado, I managed to win the lieutenant role. I decide to take second turn. So I'm going to be at the disadvantage of deploying first. My opponent will have the advantage of the 16-inch deployment zones, and I will have to face the wrath of the hollow men in turn one. I've talked about this concept many times before, but I'll say it again, that quite often it is acceptable to take both second turn and the deployment disadvantage, so long as you understand the matchup and you're confident in your own play and you're confident in your list. We just talked about what the lists were, my Akari list is sufficiently defensive, like it is actually pretty decent at holding off attacks. I know that I'm up against Nomads. Nomads are not a faction that have impersonators. They are not a faction that have all these egregious uh, Dalami style, uh, Grunt style, inferior infiltration swarming you. Um, they don't have something like a Sphinx, which is just going to walk across the table uncontested and start bashing you in the face. They are more of a defensive faction than an offensive faction in my mind. So I feel I can get away with it. I'm not saying you should always go for second turn right off the bat. If he was playing Vanilla Hak Islam, or if I suspect that he had to have an avatar, no way I'd take second turn right off the bat like that. So um, I'm deploying first. My first photo here is of the ninja in hidden deployment. If I just go back a photo, um, you can see the staircase over here. He's planning on uh, waiting until the end of the game just to go and uh, punch the button on this and be base-to-base -base contact with it, scoring me an easy two points. So that's why he's in hidden deployment here. And, um, you know, the real threat of the ninja is that, you know, you don't have to do anything showy with it. You don't have to go fight people in close combat if deploying it there is just going to win you the game, right? That's just how Infinity works sometimes. On the left, though, more interestingly, we have the chain rifle Harris uh, Wooming. The uh, HMG is just poking over this wall here. The great thing about this is that he can't be seen from the ground level, but he can watch the, the uh, upper walkways, which will be handy, especially since the hollow men, not that I know that he has hollow men, but I'm sort of worried about that, that the, the large height advantage in the middle of the table. He can be handy there, and of course, if he drops prone back behind this after failing a guts check, the doctor can come back up, up here. So that being our, um, our tokusetsu. Then, of course, the link also attaches this sniper who's prone, but if it stands up, it'll have a really good vantage point from a lot of long ranges across the table. But it's also looking across ways of my deployment zone. So if he moves something all the way around to my side of the deployment zone on my right, maybe like a bike or something like that, then I should be able to defend with the sniper. Then, of course, you've got the tanko here with the blitzen. And he's just going to be hanging out because there's this one flank situation here. And having a really cheap, expendable heavy, heavy infantry trooper there to block that off is going to be very helpful. Um, this chain rifle's not standing, so before they get to the doctor, I've also got a linked chain rifle blasting through there as well. So that's my answer for the left-hand flank. Towards the middle, we've got the flash pole spot, again, sort of a, with a very few minimal lines to the left and right. The link team through the center, deploying only four of them, but the, um, the helper bot here with the doctor behind the position where the, um, the missile launch is likely to be. Reserve troop will have the option of setting up here, here, or here, or here, or here. There's basically no other choices, really. We may be further out in the walkway. I just want to see the exact positioning of his guys first before I lay them down. You can see a couple of orange camera markers out in the midfield. That will be my Liberto and mine. So there you, are, there you are there. So the one on the right is the Liberto. Sorry, the one on the left is the Liberto. It's prone. And on the right is the, um, the, the mine. By the way, that's my lieutenant there. Um, I'm kind of, kind of worried about troopers attacking it from the middle. But when you're that close to the edge of the wall, it's going to be quite hard to see its base. And even shooting him in the back, he's going to have 16th level 2 to retaliate. 
uh, Desperado hanging out right at the back behind his truck, and then the other Tanko with a thin narrow line towards his deployment zone with the Flamin Spear across the flank, able to provide some arrows, or if he gets hit, can just duck back behind this building. So there's a, uh, a long range look, uh, a bird's eye view from the right hand flank there. And you'll see my um, HVT also on the right. He's going to deploy his HVT directly next to mine. Okay, so Nomad's left hand, oh, sorry, the Nomad's right hand flank, this is on my left. He's got some uh, tokens here just to show where his deployment zone is going to be roughly. So we have a flashball spot. We have a Morlock. All the Morlocks are represented by these really weird ass gorilla models. I don't know what range they come from. There is a, um, a zero mine layer out on top of the walkway with a mine on ground level close to where the objective is underneath this, this building here. Then on this building we've got, I think there's a, a Jaguar somewhere and another Jaguar and a Puppet Master and Securitate. Don't know what the guy on the, the roof is, can't remember. Um, and there's a walker over here. And uh, a Hollow Man up the top and another Hollow Man up the top. So planning on using uh, Super Jump to its uh, absolute potential. There's a closer view, so on the ground level we see one of those other Morlocks. I believe with his Morlocks he rolls up um, plus one armor for the two on his left, and the one over here that we just pre previously showed in green, this one here gets the 8-4 speed. But over here, a closer look at the rooftops. The main thing you need to know is that the Securitates are spread across two buildings, and the Hol Hollow Men are on the rooftops as well. Let's have a look at this mid uh, position from his back line. So another Morlock here. Warlock over here, there's the two, two uh, hollow men, there is a, um, a heckler jammer on the building. Note that they're 20 inches out because of forward deployment um, and the uh, scenario extra deployment rule. There's a zero killer hacker further out of field there, he's got his um, HVT next to my one. And yeah, just a couple of cheerleaders on top of the building, the other Morlock being on the left hand side. I think I might have one more photo of that, let's have a look, yep this is around the left hand side, so we've got the orange or reddish Mor Morlock. Extreme left hand side and another flash pulse spot all the way over here. So yeah, can't 100% remember what he spent that last 13 points on. It might have been another Securitate or an Alguacil, I'm not too really sure. Blur. My reserve trooper is the Tanko and I've um, opted for this final location for him. Does get plenty of good line of sight. I see that he's probably got no intruder. Um, just the Hollowman to contend with. So I'm happy with the Hollowman directly attacking the Tanko for the first turn. I'm okay with losing him because I know it's going to take him several orders to destroy him and remove his corpse. He's going to have to do that otherwise I revive him and then he's not going to have enough orders to really just uh, pitch into the back line and get rid of all of the meaty stuff. So there's the overview. You can see where he's going to get to and of course he's going to want to close the distance with the hollow men to get within the good range band also. His reserve trooper is a, uh, a reaction zon to the TR bot just showing up next to the, um, the Morlock in the middle. Planning on moving to this side into cover, getting assisted fire, and um, you know completing um, some shooting. So uh, first action of the turn is a Morlock Impetuous coming around through here, very close to where our Liberto troops are. The other one on the right hand side um, tries to vault over this object. My opponent unfortunately gets blindsided by the terrain. Apologies to him. This is the new Daedalus Falls terrain. Um, is it Daedalus Falls? No, Operation um, Wildfire I meant to say, where uh, I believe the silhouette's not quite big enough to vault it, so I had to come a bit further around. The Tanko does get one opportunity to Flamin Spear him, so he does go th for the smoke. Pretty much equal opportunity to smoke versus Flamin Spear, but I get the crit, first crit of the game, first dice roll of the well, apart from the Lieutenant roll, um, and the Morlock is destroyed, so hooray, first blood. Well done. Um, he does restrain his other Morlock with the extra speed on the other side of the table because um, that one would have just come immediately into line of sight of my Tanko Missile Launcher and Wooming HMG. So he wisely spends the order to restrain that. Next play is basically to um, get the Puppet Master to put Assisted Fire onto the TR Bot who then moves over and fires at the Missile Launcher at the optimal range band. And sadly for me, um, wrecks him immediately. So let's talk about this because this kind of thing is important. This is the position of the TR bot up here. You can see his little marker for assisted fire. He's just poked around the side of the, the building and is shooting at the Tanko. So the Tanko is actually just under 24 inches. So he's ballistical 16, including the link bonus minus three for cover, needing 13s on two dice. And the TR bot is needing 14s to hit because he's plus three range and ignores cover. 
So 14s on four dice. So 14s on four dice versus 13s on two dice. There's a lot of ways that can go. Um, my criticism of my opponent's list here is, and deployment, I suppose, with the uh, Tomcat technically able to support it. The criticism is that if he loses the the bot here, it's for nothing. He's wasted two orders on it. The Tanko has done absolutely nothing, and he's now down an order and down a pretty important piece. He's, he's got no more HMGs after that, and risking the Holloman onto the Tanko is even worse. Holloman would be hitting on four dice with 13s. He'd be hitting on um, two dice again on 13s, and it becomes an even worse scenario. The Holloman are even more of a pain to lose. So um, a lot might look like this is a straightforward play here. This is a symptom of not really showing up to the game with a intruder or um, or creaser or something that can really contest this kind of piece. But he does get reasonably lucky. That's okay. We'll see instances later on where I also get lucky. I've I've already got lucky with my flaming spear onto his morlock. But this is a big deal. Um, not only is it a big deal to win and not die, but you've also got to get two wounds directly on a guy who's got a missile launcher uh, and three uh, armor th and uh, three from cover as well. So if I take just a single wound here, I'm pretty happily going to just do a do dodge prone and let the let the Holloman come after me, right? Um, I'm happy for him to spin his, the rest of his orders running towards my side of the table because I know that there's no Brando Castro, no drop troopers that can really threaten me from this position. Nothing else fast like a bike. So pretty happy with my situation, but unfortunately a bit unlucky here. We do go prone. Uh, we do go unconscious. <laughs> Worse than prone, and the game continues. Seeing that he's uh, created an opening now, he's moving up with his zero mine layer, and um, although the picture doesn't really show it, the angle of this wall is such that he can fire past it and still use this part of the wall as cover. So the mine layer will be firing at me with plus three, minus three for him. I'll be up against surprise shot, camo, and cover at the zero range band. So 13s go down to fours and two dice. Not great. We're attempting the dodge, and the mine layer does rip into me, manage to getting a hit, and we're going to uh, survive with the wooming HMG, though. So hopefully, uh, I would have preferred this to have happened with a tanko missile, but that's okay. Um, I still feel like the turn is, is turning out to be acceptable for me. I was prepared for this sort of eventuality. It's just on the, the weaker side of the variance for me so far, but we'll turn that around. Okay, um, at this point, um, he's moving up with his hollow man, and uh, this is the one that started up here. He's just carefully going prone, just carefully going over here because he's just worried about various things. He's going to get into a position, though, where he can attack my Tanko Missile Launcher. And that's the other thing he wants to achieve this turn, just moving around there. He's uh, at the same time retreating with his Mine Layer and going back into Camo State. And um, I believe this is uh, some sort of assist, uh, support where No, can't quite remember what he was doing with this Puppet Master. Possibly part of a coordinated order. Anyway, um, I'm not too sure if I took a photo of it, but he does manage to destroy the Tanko. So he gets the Holoman to a good position, rips up the tam tank Tanko. I can't uh, revive him anymore, and the Holoman goes back into to total cover. Then, with the remaining orders, he's going to head out with the TR bot to try and get some more damage. Eventually gets around to a spot here where he can fire directly at my other Tanko. This is again a risk because the Tanko can shoot at him with a Blitzen. If he hits, the uh, TR bot's finished. I'm a two wound model with armor three. I can easily dodge your guts back into uh, total cover here, which will help. But the TR bot does a good number on me here and we lose the Tanko as well. So we're down two Tankos now, going unconscious, uh, which is fair. You know, you've got the weight of dice. You're hitting on 11s because it's medium range band. The Blitzen's firing back one dice 13. Um, I was expecting to take fewer hits and maybe pass Marama saves, hopefully get off with just one wound inflicted, but again, straight to unconscious. So he's following up on that. His plan is to come through, and what he really wants to do now is eliminate my Doctor, which will stop me from reviving that Tanko, make things even worse for me, maybe even uh, finish off the, the Wu Ming. But he's got to get through the, the Flash Pulse spot first, so he attempts that. Flash Boss, uh, Flash Boss. Flash, um, flash bot plus three range. The TR bot ignores cover but not mimetism, so it's going to be one dice on 16 versus four dice on 11s. This is even riskier for the TR bot, and um, I'm pleased to say that the TR bot does get the better of him. 
Note that if I roll a dice somewhere between 7 and 16 and he just misses and fails the BTS check, well that achieves the result. What really did happen here is that I got a crit, but this is one of these scenarios where a lot of other results would have achieved the same outcome, not just a crit. It's not one of these sort of situations where you need a three on one dice to crit and you know it would have been impossible to get through their armor otherwise. Not one of those cases. So I was a little bit unlucky with the tankos. Um, the HMG going down was pretty standard and straightforward. And then he's been a bit unlucky with his uh, TR bot. I think this turn has gone okay in terms of dice. He then retreats his TR bot back behind this nearby box uh, to try and defend for later. And then we uh, have another Morlock going into some cover as well, prone. Um, also shoring up the position of his other Morlock on the other side and the, uh, mine, uh, yeah, the mine layer zero. And really just defending and stuff. So that, that was more, um, I almost said Morlock's turn one, um, Nomad's turn one complete. I want to commentate on this a little bit because he spent a lot of time thinking about what to do. And uh, we talked about it a little bit after the game. The really critical thing here is that you're playing on a mission where if you don't cause the damage, then the third turn defense is going to be really hard for you because Akari is going to be able to push on to the objectives. All that needs to be done at the end, especially with no MSV2 available, is for the Akari player to throw the smoke grenades in, or move in with a ninja, or disrupt you with the Liberto, or move out with a link team which has a tanko attached to it, and it's not going to be hard to do the scoring. So you need to really set them back early in the game. You need to be in a position where your first two turns are doing the damage, and your last turn is bringing everybody out in arrow, arrow duty. That's not really off to a good start. Even though he has actually killed one ta tango completely and made the other one unconscious, wounded the wooming, just not enough damage has been inflicted. And the whole idea of moving the, the hollow men around and getting one kill but then retreating and doing so much work with a TR bot that doesn't really have the most efficient odds for killing you know everything might be good against one target, but as you close the distance, come up against mimetism, it's not as good. We're in a bit of a bad way. I mean, the, the Morlocks are so great at throwing smoke, uh, I really do re um, do uh, regret the lack of an intruder HMG, I think would have been a good fit for this list. Or, as I pointed out, a um, Zondnaught with Spitfire, able to close the distance and find those really awkward angles that aren't covered by the, uh, the missile launcher and the HMG, and then just whipping in the back line of finding those really awesome kills. That might have been another way to play. Or a Hellcat Spitfire, that kind of thing. Um, anything to really just take the fight to your opponent if you don't get to go second because Nomads would be great second with this list because they're very defensive, they've got the tools, but with first, the mission becomes a problem. So, seeing an opportunity, I'm landing the Yuan Yuan on the side of the table next to the TR bot for two reasons. Reason number one, I can throw a smoke grenade out here and the, although there's a flash pole spot watching this angle, it becomes easy pickings for my brawler sniper who could benefit from the smoke. Secondarily, the Yuan Yuan can then come around through the smoke and engage the TR bot and basically solve that problem, neutralizing that. So he does that. Um, on the other side of the table, we also have the, uh, the bike rolling out here, uh, throwing the light grenade launcher down, not realizing that that was actually contending the TR bot in the distance, so only barely managing to survive that one. Um, in fact, no, it might have been up against a war call rather than the TR bot, but either way, the smoke does go down successfully. The Tanko is impetuous, but I can restrain that impetuous move. Um, that's no worries. Looking at Group 2 with the Doctor's Orders available to it, uh, standing up and moving over to the Tanko, who is unfortunately unconscious, but she can now revive him. I believe I did need to waste a command token doing a reroll, but he does manage to get up uh, and uh, staunch the flow of blood and is back in the fight. Already used one Blitzen, but he's, he's keen to have another go. Alright, here is the smoke being landed from the Yuan Yuan, and that does indeed this uh, allow us to shoot this flashball spot in the distance with our Brawler Sniper by moving the Link Team out and getting the uh, Sniper into this position to then uh, shoot. The uh, Yuan Yuan can then move around into smoke, force a change facing ARO, and then plant itself into close combat. So even if nothing else happens this turn, he would have to shoot into combat and potentially kill his own bot to remove this or try and electric pulse me, in which case I'd have a chance to swing the sword and whack him. 
I'm not content with that though. The um, oh, the tankos. I'm doing a coordinated order, I believe. So this tanko you're seeing now is the flamen spear tanko on the other flank, moving from his position through to this spot where he can use this wall as cover, and uh, come within eight inches of the brawler lieutenant who will become the new link leader and the new leader of a five-man link team. And the beauty of this is that this Tanko takes the place of his old fallen teammate and can now use either the Flammer Spear with one shot with the full link team bonus or the Contender, which is the choice he'll usually make because the Contender, pretty good on ARO. The range bands not, might not be great. Holomin might still kill me, but he's still... A tank and tanko who can tank things, and he still has the link team bonus and cover available to him. Uh, he's now no longer impetuous joining the link team, so he will be able to benefit from the plus three armor and the minus three for them to hit. So pretty happy with that. But the other tanko, uh, after we've taken a photo of the link team being reformed, by the way, the other tanko now moving out over here, using the same trick to get into close combat and then charging in to finish off the TR bot. Because once his HMG has gone down, I should be able to set up a commanding view of the battlefield with my Brawler Sniper. And if you're trying to take on a Brawler Sniper in a link team with a Holomin from long range, it becomes Holomin on sevens, presuming they're not you know, beyond 32, and the Sniper on 15s on two dice, which is pretty bad for the Holomin, I must say. Anyway, the Tanko moves in against the TR bot, swings his sword with the burst bonus from the Yuan Yuan, and promptly rolls a 1 and a 3 and gets electrocuted. Ugh. So, I've had a few moments of good luck. This was not one of them, but that's okay. It's one of these games where it comes and goes back and forth. Probably the best kind of game to have. Bike repositioning behind the wall, and that's pretty much it for our turn. No, it's not it. The Harris team now moving out. This is important, actually. So with the TR bot temporarily neutralized, we've got the silhouette of the HMG just carefully watching this flank for any drop troopers and shit like that. And then the Harris team leader at the back here, and of course the, um, the sniper positioning right at the back here has lined through the middle, around the side, it's got some height up to see where the hollow men are going to jump from. Really happy with his commanding view here from right at the back. Um, just a shot here showing the Doctor climbing into cover also. And then finally, after an entire game round played, and this is typical of, of us, we finally remember that data trackers are a thing, so we have to choose data trackers, which is pretty stupid, but this chain rifle SMG wooming Harris team leader is going to be the data tracker for Ikari. And this hollow man on top in the middle of the table is going to be the data tracker for Nomads. Alrighty, um, again, there is a Morlock here who uh, needs to restrain, uh, but then thinks better of it, thinking, well, I can get a free smoke here. So Impetuous standing up, you see the Brawler Sniper in the distance, is going to stand up and throw smoke and get uh, wiped out by the Sniper. Another um, Morlock throwing a smoke nearby to the Liberto and it's mine. And then over here, you can see our, um, our, our Morlock, uh, he's, he's basically run out in, in face of the sniper, I've just got my camera in the way, who snipes him pretty promptly, but then a smoke uh, grenade goes down nearby. Um, originally, his thinking is to throw a smoke grenade down in such a way that he can bring on his, um, his drop trooper without being seen by the contender from the tanker on the other side of the table and without being seen by the brawler sniper. But he, unfortunately, he wasn't able to land a smoke in quite the right spot, so he brings it round the back instead. So this was, let me remind myself, the Tomcat Engineer with Light Flamethrower, Combi Rifle, and a Zond Cat. The thinking is to, rev to repair the flashball spot first, but then potentially go in and shoot at the um, people in close combat with the TR bot, and maybe even revive the TR bot later, which is his path to victory. So just carefully moving around here, carefully moving the lines of fire of the Brawler Sniper, and then he'll get into position to cover where he can fire into the close combat. And um, he starts doing that. He does revive the... Uh, no, in fact, he doesn't even waste an order reviving the flashball spot, mind you. That doesn't even happen. He starts shooting at the bot, and he's shooting and shooting and shooting. And um, the way I, I believe the rules work here is that unlike old-school Games Workshop games, you don't nominate a combat to shoot at. That's not actually a thing. You nominate one of the enemy models, either the Yuan Yuan or the Tanko. And then if your shot misses, 
it might potentially hit the TR bot. You can't hit the other enemy model. That's my reading of the rules. If I'm wrong, please let me know as you guys always do. So he targets the Yuan Yuan first, noting that any misses will, you know, of a factor of six, um, a, 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 a category of six, failure category of six, will hit the TR bot. He misses none of them. All three shots go into the Yuan Yuan, promptly kill him, leaving just the TR bot there. So he shoots into the combat again. The combat, I keep saying that. And the shots land home. This time he does kill his TR bot, but he also lays the tanko low as well. So pretty good if you ask me. I mean, the ideal situation for me there would have been for him to kill the TR bot straight away. Both of my guys break out of combat. Then when he shoots again, I dodge and I put smoke down and we're all happy. Especially considering the brawler can see through the smoke cloud, which would appear right under near where, where this uh, banner is. So a pretty good outcome for my opponent. Like I've been saying, luck is going back and forward, back and forward, and that makes a really fun, entertaining game. His data tracker now moving around, Hollow Man just getting into position and uh, trying to find a spot where he can actually take on the contender. So again, brave play up against a fully linked contender, but he is a Hollow Man with Spitfire and he's pretty tough. So Spitfire now firing at our Tanko friend here and really ripping into him once he does get into the exact spot he needs to get into. Um, he's worried about the mine showing up if he super jumps and stuff like that, so the Morlock moves in, sacrificing himself, fails the dodge check, fails the armor save, that's what we want to see. Morlock gone, but mine gone as well. Now to get the line of sight that it needs, the uh, Hollow Man moves right to the back here before standing up and fires at the Tanko with the optimal range band. Again, although the photo doesn't show up very well, he is actually just barely using this part of the wall as cover against the Tanko. I did rule that that was fine, and uh, then we have the shootout, and the Tanko is punished and uh, is wounded, and I believe that I just failed the guts and uh, run somewhere else, if I recall correctly. Um, so yeah, um, pretty decent, and that's, again, the power of having that additional backup heavy infantry model you can put into your link team as a substitute. Okay, um, I can't 100% remember why I took this photo, but I think it's because the position of the Hollow Man is here, and it was trying to fire at something or other on this side of the table. Possibly the Tanko here, which um, wasn't quite destroyed, so the Hollow Man had to finish that off. I can't 100% remember what happened. All I remember is that Tanko going unconscious by the end of the turn, whether that was from the Hollow Man or the, um, the the cat guy. We then have the uh, zero killer hacker laying a mine at the, the top of the stairs. He's a bit paranoid that I'm heading up the stairs with the Liberto. That might be one way to play, but given the way the game's going, I just need to survive and outlast. I don't even need to attack him because I'm getting enough, uh, enough kills come to me by way of his move. So this next turn, I just really need to consolidate, keep my guys alive, and wait for him to spread his guys out in the last turn and pick the weakest point. So this mine won't do too much. Then we come to the second turn for Ikari, screaming along the battlefield with our, um, our Desperado. Um, doesn't really run into any trouble there, so just ends up hooning into the middle of the table. The Doctor, um, after thinking carefully about this play, decides to move out towards the, the tanker with very few, few orders to spare on him. I thought about firing the mid kit, but the odds were terrible, so the Doctor moves out here, finally makes it to the Tanko a second time coming to his rescue. Gosh, he really owes her a drink after this, and he is just revived. Um, thankfully, I was worried it might be um, one of these situations where he's lost, but he is revived, and um, that allows him to go after the, um, the Tomcat, or whatever it's called. What is it called? Tomcat. But then I realized, hang on a sec, the Tomcat's got a flamethrower. If I move in, this guy might not get the trade with his light shotgun. Um, he might not be able to get into range um, well enough, and he, he can already be seen. The Tomcat has line of sight just from the side here, so I managed to scoot in with the Doctor okay, but as soon as the, the Tanko moves forward, he's going to get shot at. Didn't quite like that after spending so much effort reviving him. So... I decided to make a bit of a judgment call here, and this might not have been the wisest play. Decided to move out with the Wu Ming in the, uh, the Harris here, with a wounded HMG, and bring in the Brawler from his Sniper Perch. And I'm, I'm coming all the way around here, avoiding the line of sight of the Tomcat, 
because the Tomcats only got line of sight out through here. And the plan is just to step through here and get him at close range. This is a risk because I'm going to get flamethrowered and I'm relying on one of the armor saves being passed with armor 4. So decent chances of that happening. Otherwise, my data track is lost and the link team's broken and I can't really afford the command token to revive them. So it's risky. Um, it pays off in this case because um, I do manage to pass the armor save and the double chain rifle just destroys them. But we've talked about this later. My opponent felt that um, a better play for me would have been to have left the brawler back at the deployment zone because he was just having so much trouble with it. It was just so well locking down the table. But um, I felt it was better to move out because even though the brawler had a great sniper spot, he wasn't able to see that crucial central objective in the middle of the table, so my opponent could have got there anyway. But I do see his point. Like, uh, in my final turn, I could then move out and shoot whatever's in the middle of the table after repositioning the brawler, so that might have been better. Anyway, as played, the wooming set up here. I moved the victorious sniper over here to fire at his uh, Jaguar, just covering the stairs. Jaguar dodges back successfully, so um, getting a bit of good luck go his way after all. And then the team are basically going to set up here. Data Tracker at the back, uh, Brawler covering this angle, uh, HMG covering this angle. He does have a Mine Layer Zero here, but he just can't afford now to spend the orders coming at me when he needs to set up in the last turn on the objectives and pressing buttons and getting his Data Tracker in position. We also have the Revive Tanko setting up a position covering this objective over here with his remaining Blitzen and we're good to go. So my opponent, oh wait, not his turn yet. The bike moves towards the central objective and exposes the jammer, which promptly jams him. The heckler getting the last laugh here, putting the bike into isolated state. I feel like this wasn't a great play because it, it reveals the location of the jammer and um, the bike next turn is only going to impetuous and irregular anyway. It doesn't matter if it's jammed, so yeah, I don't feel like that was really worth it, but, you know, at least he isolated him. Okay, Link Team reforms a little bit. We've still got the Tanko in the correct position. He still is alive with one wound. Okay, my opponent, in the last Nomad turn here, Securitate, doesn't matter if he dies, Lieutenant Order stands up, fires at the Brawler, doesn't quite manage to kill him. I also ARO with my Tanko in the distance with his Blitzen, Hits him, forces the guts check, he's not courageous, goes back prone, we'll have to spend more orders attacking. And that was important because now he can't be an ARO for my turn, although he does voluntarily spend another order on him later. Hollow Man, jumping down the back of this building from the middle, this is the data tracker, and then able to weasel his way around the battlefield. He wants to try and get shots first to the Doctor, who he destroys, and then he'll be coming a little bit further around after the, the Wooming HMG, who he can go after as well. So... Doctor, destroyed. Continues moving around. Uh, firing at the bike. First shots don't manage to beat the smoke. Second, because well, he manages the guts behind the wall, passing an armor save. Second shot, unfortunately, triggers the smoke. The bike wins. Very important. Sets me up in a great position for the last turn. Hollow Man now going after the Wooming, who is wounded. HMG in the link versus the Hollow Man out of cover. Hollow Man, having some good luck going back his way, destroys the Wooming easily. Then we have him going after the Tanko over here, who I don't believe he quite manages to get. Um, and then we're in a situation, yeah, because he guts his back behind this wall. And then we have a situation where he's sort of ending the turn coming behind this marker here, prone so that he can only sort of see around it. This is the data tracker in base to base with the central objective. And I think you guys can see how easily this will be the shift. The bike will either kill him or we can have the Liberto stay in base contact with this so he won't count as scoring. He briefly considers going into suppression fire, but uh, decides against it. Instead, we have the zero mine layer repositioning to the bottom of the stairs and coming down a bit further. And um, also the other hollow man um, jumping down to the bottom to see if it can get some, um, some leverage. Also, the Securitate at the top of this spends an order standing up, firing at the brawler, and I think does manage to kill him um, after the second attempt at shooting. So, yep, brawler goes down as well, stripping another order away from me. But that's all he can do. That's that's it. That's all that nomads have to offer this, for this entire game. Which means that even though the bike's isolated, it's got an uh, impetuous move, screams around the corner into combat with the uh, Hollow Man. Um, this does put me in line of sight of the second Hollow Man as well. The Nanopulsar proves to be just barely out of range. So the Desperado is just blazing into close range with the Hollow Man with its 
um, assault pistol manages to win the shootout reduces it to one wound not killing it though so can't get the extra three points but the desperado survives so that's basically it he's got nothing that could score right now um so i'm uprooting the link team just to make this as safe as possible i want as many bodies doing this as possible they're all gathering up moving around the table and moving towards the um, console just in case one of them gets zapped we do take a combi rifle from long range from the zero mine layer but we just shrug that off and just continue moving to this objective where even though we can flash pulse me we can move in with the Ford observer kaisatsu and press the button uh, note that there is a ninja on this ladder as well with enough orders to move down there if that doesn't work but the kaisatsu's managed it so we don't even need to do that so that was reliable and the liberto just crosses the battlefield dodges the mine here and go, goes base to base with the other objective on the other side there was an opportunity for me to attack the um, Hollow Man and finish it off and get the middle objective, but I would be going into a jammer to do so. It would have been more dangerous and the easier, more reliable win was open to me, so I, I went for it. If this was the last round of a tournament and I absolutely needed a maximum victory to win, I would have taken some more risks here at the loss of maybe some ranking. But it is what it was, and um, Ikari cruised to a pretty easy victory by the end of it. So um, I think we can pretty easily see what went wrong for Nomads. Um, just a little bit of, um, you know, anti-ARO stuff lacking. I would have preferred to see uh, something a bit beefier in terms of long-range uh, game. I don't think this list needs two Hollow Men. One Hollow Man is perfectly fine. And in turns one or two... Just finding slightly better opportunities to really stick the knife in and do damage would have been better. In the final turn as well, I would have liked to have seen him move out and put a lot more things on aero duty that can use flash pulses and combi rifles and just those little prickly things that could have potentially taken down the Desperado as it zoomed into that last objective. Hope you guys enjoyed that one, enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll see you with some more content very soon.